To start off, let's talk about one of the highest yield topics on the MCAT, action potentials. To better understand how the action potentials work, let's first explore why it works. A neuron, or really any cell for that matter, has some sort of charge compared to its environment. Now, by convention, we always label the ECF, or extracellular fluid, the area outside of the cell, as having a voltage of zero, which you can see we've done right here. Now, to determine the charge inside the cell, we have to take the permeability and concentration of different ions into account. So when dealing with the neuron for the MCAT, we're gonna pretend only four ions exist. And functionally, four are really only important. These are sodium, potassium, calcium, and chlorine. To understand the resting membrane potential, as well as how neurons fire in an action potential, we have to first know how the relative concentration of these ions are. In other words, is there more of ion X inside or outside of the cell? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll take a look at the membrane of the neuron compared to the ECF. Now, again, out here in the black space, this is the ECF. Inside, it's the ICF, the inner cellular fluid. So outside of the cell of our three important neurons, we have higher concentrations of sodium, positively charged sodium. We have higher concentrations of positively charged calcium with two plus on there. And then kind of interestingly, the only negatively charged ion we care about is chlorine. And you guessed it, it's in a higher concentration in the ECF. So that just leaves us with potassium as being high inside of the ICF. Now, these ions can't just pass through the cell membrane. This is in part due because the ions are charged and we know that cell membranes are hydrophobic. Because of this, the only way ions can get into a cell are through the channels in the membrane. Now, there are two types of channels that we care about for membrane potentials, leak channels and voltage-gated channels. However, for the resting membrane potential, we only care about leak channels, but be sure to check out our other video on the action potential to see how voltage-gated channels fit into this story and into the action potential as a whole. Now, the two most important leak channels you will find in a neuron are sodium and potassium channels. However, there are many times more potassium channels than there are sodium channels. This means that potassium efflux or potassium leaving the cell happens more often than sodium entering the cell just due to the permeability of um, potassium. Because there are so many more potassium channels, so given a door to leave the cell, it's gonna take it, it's gonna walk on out. Because of this, because there are so many more potassium channels than sodium channels, this means that potassium efflux kind of sets the resting membrane potential. So because we have a positive charge leaving the cell, inside the cell, we are gonna have a relatively negative charge. This negative charge happens to be negative 70 millivolts compared to the outside, which again, if you remember from earlier, the ECF is set to zero millivolts. This is just by convention. The ECF is always zero. This helps us compare apples to oranges, or apples to apples, really. But you may now be asking, if all of this potassium is leaking out all the time, well then why doesn't the neuron just run out of potassium? And the answer to this excellent question is the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump uses 10% of the body's ATP to continuously pump sodium into the cell and potassium out of the cell. This helps us to maintain it and stabilize the resting membrane potential until an external stimulus comes along and causes an action potential. So just briefly looking at the sodium potassium pump, let's call it an ATP ACE. So it's the same thing as saying sodium potassium 
and let's draw it in blue. Let's put it right over here. So I'm just going to draw a channel for the ease of explaining this. So the sodium potassium pump is going to take um, it's going to take two potassium from outside the cell, and it's going to take three sodium from inside the cell, and it's going to just exchange these. So it's going to use ATP. So let me draw on the ATP here. Let's put the ATP in green. So we're going to have ATP powering the channel, turning into ADP and an inorganic phosphate. Whenever we see ATP going to ADP, this just means that energy is being used by that ATP. So the energy that that ATP brings allows us to pump against a gradient, bringing those two potassium in and getting rid of the three sodium. This potassium then is able to eventually move on out of those leak channels that we drew earlier. Now, hopefully this has increased your knowledge of the resting membrane potential and the ultimate goal of understanding an action potential for the MCAT. So if you would like to learn more about the action potential, please check out our next video where we dig into how to apply the resting membrane potential and what this means for the action potential as a whole. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.